What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down a skill that all wide receivers need to know how to do. So I hope this video helps you guys out. I hope it can teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you'd like to get some work in with us this offseason, we are going to be traveling out to 15 more states for two-day-long QB and wide receiver training camp. So next up on our camp tour, we'll be coming out to San Francisco, then Orlando, New Orleans, Charlotte, Dallas, the DMV, St. Louis, Honolulu, Boston, Cleveland, Austin, Seattle, New New Jersey, Denver, and Los Angeles. So if you guys are local to one of those cities, would like to come out and get some work in with us for two days, eight hours total of training, and we'll have DBs out there also for one-on-ones, half line. Check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out to one of our camps. Let's get started. So the main skill that all wide receivers need to be able to have to do to be able to beat press off the line is reaction with their releases, being able to react off of how a DB plays. So this first example here is from Devontae Adams using his like famous kind of hesitation and go release. I call it a slide and go release. So how it's built off of just a regular slide release. So how many times have you guys seen a guy, you know, use a slide release? So a slide release is a situation where you have like inside shade man coverage. He's maybe about a yard or two off. You know, you slide to the outside. You're real patient. DB moves off the platform and then you slip under and run a slant, right? So how many, how many of you guys have probably seen that? I'm sure all of you have probably seen at one point or another myself talk about it or a receiver do it. So this can build off of that. So maybe you've ran that slide release before. Maybe you've got that DB to jump. And now you want to build. So let's say you have to run something we call this slide and go on a fade route. So what Adams does right here is he comes off the ball and he makes the release look the same. To be able to force a reaction out of this DB to allow me to react off of how he plays us, I have to make my release look the same. How many times have you seen Devontae Adams hesitate and then throw that crossover move? Gets the DB to jump and then runs underneath. So that's what we're trying to make the release look like. So he slides to the outside, he's patient, DB sits to the inside, and now we got him on a step and we can just take off and go. That's what this release is about. Now, some of you might be asking, well, what if he jumps outside like how he does on that regular slide release because I'm making it look the same? And that's what we're going to be showcasing in the next example. So that's the reaction element of this release. So let's play this thing full speed. So great job by Adams making the release look the same, being patient, building off the slide release. So what if he jumps? This is the skill that all wide receivers need to have. And it's what Sammy Watkins does right here in this route from the Super Bowl a couple years ago against Richard Sherman. So he comes off the ball. He does that same patient slide release, but Sherman jumps to the outside. He puts the brakes on and takes the inside release. So this is something that... A lot of wide receivers cannot do. You know, we, we talk about it all the time off the line as, oh, you got to have a plan, right? Like you're coming up to the line of scrimmage, you see the DB's leverage, you got to have a plan. You got to have a plan of action. How am I going to attack this coverage? What release am I going to use? What move at the top of the route am I going to use? You got to have a plan. But when that DB does something that takes away the plan, that's where a lot of wide receivers crumble and they can't do anything because they don't have that reaction skill. So you see how Watkins, he comes off the line, he makes it look the same, right? He wants to, he wants to run a fake. And on every single fade route, what's the desired release? An outside release, because that's the easier way to run a fade. But sometimes we may not have that. So what Watkins does here is he makes it look the exact same. He slides to the outside. DB jumps to the outside. Okay, let's put the brakes on and let's take the inside release. Now, a lot of wide receiver coaches will hate on this inside release. But when you guys force an outside, uh, on a fade route, I should say, because on a fade route, they, they've been taught, you know, old school guys will say, oh, you got to always take a rele outside release on a fade. Only time you have to take an outside release on a fade is if it's an MOR. What an MOR means is it's a must or mandatory outside release. So you have to go outside. Usually what happens on that play is like the outside receiver, like let's say it's the Z running a fade and then the slots running a five yard out. So we're trying to get that corner to run with the fade so we could hit the five yard out. That's why you do the must outside release. But when it's like four verts or you're just running a straight up fade, there's nothing tagged underneath to threaten the flats. You could take an inside release all day long because I would rather have you take an inside release and get to this position where you're stacking him than force it. Because that's where that reaction element comes into play. You need to master that skill. Because if this DB jumps, Sherman jumps to the outside and we're hesitating, and let's say he forces the outside release, he will get hands on us, put his hands right into our hip, and squeeze us to that sideline. Now, as a quarterback, I'm not throwing you that ball because I got a yard to the sideline. I need space to fade you outside. They call it a fade route for a reason because I need to actually fade you. So when you can put the brakes on, take the inside release, and get to this position, okay, now I can fade you. Now I can put that ball with some air and drop you towards the sideline, not 
right on the sideline where I have to make a perfect pass. Now, some of the mistakes that guys will make on this is they'll do this, right? So they'll do this slide release to the outside, but they don't attack vertically. What they will do is they will go lateral. So they'll come off the line and they'll go here. They'll go almost to the side. Now, if this DB, fellas, if he sits to the inside and you do that and then you take off vertical, you might be able to get him. But if he jumps, like let's say you slide and he's patient and goes with you, you still have to get vertical. So if there's this big gap between the two of you with your slide release, he's going to be able to recover because he has the angle to recover. So you have to threaten him vertically. You have to attack almost at a 45 degree angle to force him to make a decision. With your releases, you are forcing him to show his hand. And that is how we can react. And that is how we can master that skill. So by forcing him to react, I have to attack vertical. If he has to honor that fade and he doesn't want to get beat with the outside release on the fade, he's going to have to move. Okay, great. I attack outside. I put the brakes on, take the inside release. Now, one of the mistakes that another, or one of the other mistakes the wide receivers will make on this is they'll do this they'll attack vertical db will jump they'll do the right reaction but instead of getting off on their route and staying skinny they will take a very wide angle they will try to run away from contact from the db but trust me fellas if i'm taking an inside release the only thing that you have to worry about in terms of contact from a db is his inside hand because to take an inside release, so what if he gets his outside hand on you? You still got the release. You still maintain timing and maintain spacing. The name of the game with press coverage when they try to teach DBs to press and jam is to screw up timing. Screw up the timing with the quarterback and the wide receiver. So if I can keep timing and let's say he's running downfield with a hand on me, so what? I kept timing and I got up into my route. Your separation comes from your stem and the top of the route. So when he puts the brakes on here, he doesn't go wide. He stays hip to hip with the DB. That is what I call getting skinny. And I will say hip to hip as well. If you guys have heard me say that phrase. So when you're hip to hip, it makes it easier to stack. We got him off the platform. He's just focused on beating his inside arm. So what if he gets hands on me with the outside arm? I got off the jam. I was able to stay skinny and I was able to restack on this. Great job by Watkins working that move. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. So fellas, a skill that you have to master to play the wide receiver position is to be able to react. Okay, so now we're looking at two routes here from Darnell Mooney. And it's pretty much the same concept of a reaction, except it's just a different release. And we're going to talk about closing space with a DB. So anytime that you see this look from a DB where he's maybe about two to three yards off, head up, um, or maybe not even head up, inside shade, could be outside shade, it's called catch technique. So Mooney's running a slot fade right here. So he's just pretty much just running a fade to the outside from the slot. We're trying to run like maybe a hitch or a slant from the outside, take the corner out of the play and hit this thing. So when we have this catch technique, what the DB is hoping hoping that we do obviously he doesn't know the route but what he's hoping we do is that we just take off and go run so like he just thinks oh i got some space with him i'm just going to try to run around him that's exactly what the db wants because as soon as you go wide he is going to move he's going to kick step or keep his base get hands on us and squeeze us to the sideline and we know from the last example that can't happen so what i have to do with my release is i have to attack him i have to close the distance aka step on his toes i have to make him think that i'm going inside going out outside, whatever the route might be, but I got to close space. So it's easier to restack. So what Mooney does right here is he starts closing space with the DB. He's got one of three decisions right here. He could either shade to the outside, start motoring back or sit or shade to the inside. So he starts to kind of motor back, inch back a little bit. So Mooney keeps closing space. He doesn't just throw a crossover move with about a yard of space because he's still got to get vertical and the DB could take the angle. He tries to almost step on his toes, not literally, but he's getting into his cushion. So when he makes that move, he can stay tight. He's got space for the QB to fade him out. Now, quarterback threw this ball late. If he puts this thing on time, he's got a ton of room to fade him, but throws it late. I don't know if he was getting pressure or what the deal is, but that is why he went with that release. But it's also based on a reaction. So that's like the name of the video, right? Or that's like the name of the game with this video is just being able to react off of a DB, how a DB plays you and react to what shade he does. So if I close the distance with him, the another name for closing the distance is called gathering in. I'm running at him trying to see how he's going to play it so I can react. 
That's what makes a great wide receiver. It's almost like you're playing basketball. So I close the space with him. He shades inside. Okay, bam, I take the outside release. I close the space with him. He starts inching back. Okay, I get more into his cushion and give him a move. I close the space with him. He shades outside. Okay, I take the inside release. Maybe not on a slot fade, but on a route like a post, a dig, and you have this coverage, that's absolutely what you can do. So let's play this full speed, and then we'll show a second example of Mooney doing the exact same thing against a coverage where he has to take an inside release when it's a little bit more uncomfortable so what he's running here is i believe on this next play is another slot fade um but it looks a little bit like a corner and let's talk about it in terms of like a corner because we already talked about a slot fade so this is a look that guys will see is they'll see like a too high safety look whether it's cover four cover two and they'll have a linebacker who's lined up like inside shade so his sole purpose in life is to get hands on us and reroute us as hard as possible to screw up timing with the quarterback some defenses especially at the high school level will tell this guy just literally get hands on this guy if that's all you ever do try to rebound him because that will screw up timing so if we have a concept like a smash concept for example where the outside receiver runs a hitch and the slots running a corner what co what slots will do when they have this look is they try to run around this guy and we know based on the catch technique this isn't catch technique this is zone but based on that catch technique what he is trying to do is get hands so he hopes that we do that so he could pretty much jam the hell out of us right so we can't be afraid of him but we also have to gather info. So we have to go at him. We have to close space, but be prepared to react. That's the name of the game. That's the skill that wide receivers need to master is being able to react. So you see how Mooney runs this route and he takes the inside release on a corner. That's not the most ideal thing. Ball was thrown late, gave the DB time to recover, but watch what he does. He closes space. Linebacker jumps to the outside. Okay, fine. I just throw a crossover and take the inside release. It's like you're playing basketball, fellas. You got the hoop right here. You're playing basketball. You see a defender jump out wide. Okay, I'm gonna take the outside lane and try to go to the go to the hoop. Not a basketball guy, but it seems pretty common sense to just be able to react and dribble where the guy's not. You don't want to run into anybody, so that's how you want to treat your releases. Anytime that you have maybe a predetermined release where you can react like a slide, maybe a split release. Or when you got a close distance with a DB, just know we are gathering info, trying to react off of how he is going to play it. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Mooney closing space, reacting and taking the inside release and getting separation just with an earlier pass. That is definitely a completion.